Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Now the day is over, night has drawn nigh, shadows of the evening have spread across the sky. The darkness has gathered, the stars their watch is keeping, birds, bees, flowers and people will soon be asleep. Lord Jesus, give to those who are weary and troubled a sweet, calm sleep this night. Comfort those who are suffering with grief, pain, uncertainty of the future through the long night watches. May your angels spread their wings above and around, watching over their beds. Lord, you are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for word, too wonderful for comprehension, for like nothing ever seen or heard. And in spite of everything that is going on around us and throughout the world, we cannot grasp your infinite wisdom or fathom the depths of your love for us. So we stand, we stand in awe of you. We are forever grateful for your provenient grace which draws us near to you, calling us. So, Lord, we are forever grateful that you came to save the lost. Lord, we pray for the one who will bring your word of encouragement this evening. May there be a blessing to the hearers and we be drawn closer to you. May there be food for the hungry soul, comfort for the lost and weary, guidance for the lost, shelter in time of storm. Lord, we are in this this time of reflection in the Lenten season. We ask your forgiveness for ourselves and for people everywhere. As we focus on this time of suffering and sacrifice, help us not just to give up something, but to focus on you, O Lord, and what you, and what you sacrifice in order that we might have life abundantly and eternally. Help us to look to you with thankfulness and a grateful heart. Lord, we ask you to be our refuge, strength, and present help in time of trouble. We are overwhelmed with the news of war, earthquakes, cyclones, shootings, stabbings, and man's inhumanity to their fellow man. We pray especially for those suffering the effects and aftermath of the earthquakes in Syria, Turkey, Cyprus, and surrounding areas, the people of the Ukraine and Russia, We pray for our country, Barbados, for those in any form of authority. May they seek your will and way when making decisions that impact on the lives of people of the country. May their first priority be to seek your guidance. May your Holy Spirit continue to bring us peace and joy which only you can give. Be with us this night and in your mercy hear our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 18. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have re received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites for their mark, their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. This is the word of the Lord.
loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your people at this time as we reflect upon the suffering of your son. Be our interpreter and interpret for us, O God, so that these words will touch our hearts, not only heard, but that they will touch our hearts, God, and that we all will be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Is the motive right? If anyone is looking for a snapshot of right living, it can be found in Jesus' sermons on the mount. This sermon covers Jesus' direct teachings on the do's and don'ts of Christian living. The words of the gospel reading for tonight of Matthew 6, 1 to 18, are part of such teachings. Jesus had just completed his teaching on the area of love for enemies when he addressed the three themes of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. At the opening of this chapter 6, Jesus captures the essence of the whole admonition on those three sections with the words, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 1 As Jesus cautions his followers, he seems to be certain each one of the actions actually will be done. Not that they may be done, but that they will be done by them. And so he directs them from a godly perspective. This apparent certainty is substantiated through the words at the beginning of each of these three sections. As I said, alms giving, praying, and fasting. At verse 2, Jesus says, So whenever you give alms. At verse 5, he says, And whenever you pray. At verse 16, he says, And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. So Jesus is certain that these actions are being practiced, especially by the leaders, and is forced to guide them on the right motive. Of interest, too, is that in each instance, Jesus discourages the followers from imitating the hypocrites. In the first instance, he says, So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets. In the second instance, he says, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. In the third instance, he says, And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. So he constantly makes a reference to the hypocrites. A hypocrite was seen as one who acts for appearance only, a double dealer, a person who appears to be different from what he or she really is, a person who lives by double standards. Jesus seems to be saying that persons are using religion to cover up or promote themselves. I trust that's not the case with us today. And note that this hypocritical behavior goes back to the days of the Israelites. I quote one occasion when the prophet Isaiah brought the message from God against this behavior. Isaiah 29, 13 to 14, and it states, The Lord said, Because his people draw near with their mouths, and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their worship of me is a human 
commandment learned by rot. So I will again do amazing things with this people, shocking and amazing. So in other words, these persons were playing a part. They pretended or appeared to be serving God. But in fact, they were serving only themselves. And God would deal with them. They live a life of self-gratitude. So my friends, hypocrisy is dangerous. As one writer puts it in this way, and this writer says, hypocrisy is a spiritual cancer and can destroy lives and ministries. Think of the disciple Judas, who was a hypocrite, and we read what he did. He betrayed Jesus as a result. So here Jesus lays his warning early in his ministry. Therefore, one must not act for the purpose of show to be seen by men. Instead, one's act must be done toward God. One must therefore be attentive to the judgment of the Father who sees what is done in secret. Words that were used actually after each reference teaching. Indeed, our Father who sees in secret will reward. We are rewarded according to our deeds, my friends. Here Jesus is saying that the motive of our action is of utmost importance. We are to ensure that our hearts are right in everything we do. It is certain, though, that we cannot achieve this on our own, but must ask God to help us achieve a pure and contrite heart. Note that there are repercussions when we act from a heart that is not right with God. God is seen and God will respond accordingly. There will be no reward for this hypocritical behavior. Our act should not be self-centered, but instead God-centered. One message for us in the alms given is that we ought to give without a fanfare event, without glorification of persons. Listen to what Jesus says at verse 2. Whenever you give, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Arms were money or goods given to those in need as an act of charity, and the word arms is used many times in the Bible. It comes from the Greek word meaning pity or mercy. And hence it's felt that when you give alms, you were dispensing mercy. And then if you think of the trumpet, generally the sound of a trumpet signals the arrival of someone or some group. So Jesus is saying no need to publicize our giving or cause an alarm. He expects us to help each other in confidence to help each other without the beneficiary or the recipient feeling embarrassed or humiliated. In Jesus' days on earth, there were great gatherings at the synagogues and alms were given at the time in front of the masses to capture the attention to the deeds. It seems as though the streets were the conspicuous point for recognition, where all and sundry met and persons would therefore have been privy to observing what was considered good deeds. The writer of Proverbs frequently speaks about this giving and the relationship with God. 
And I cite a few of those quotes. Proverbs 14, 31 states, Those who are kind to the needy honor God. Again, Proverbs 19, 17, it states that whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Then at Proverbs 22, 9, it says, Those who are generous are blessed. Would you like to be blessed tonight? Then help those in need. Reach out to those in need. Share with them. Note that the idea of almsgiving was not limited to just money, though money is an important part in the process, but it extends to time, to feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and in prison, acts that were included in the parable of the judgment, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, as for which the king will reward according to the deeds. So listeners, why is this giving so important? Giving is evidence of our love. Giving is all part of showing love to and for one another. Jesus declares love as the greatest and second command in Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Love God with all our heart, soul, mind, strength, and love each other as ourselves. For Jesus' love is critical in the Christian living. He told the disciples by this Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. John 13, 35. Jesus expects us to bear each other's burdens according to Galatians 6, 2. And so often we are so busy or too busy to recognize person's burdens. So often we ask persons how they're feeling or how they're doing, but we do not even wait for an answer. So often we've been worshiping next to persons, yet we've never stopped to find out in what way we could offer God's love to them. Jesus and his disciples looked out for the needs of persons financially and otherwise. You may recall when Judah said in John 12, 5 and 6, that the perfume that Mary used on Jesus could have been sold and the money given to the poor. John 12. This is an indication that they were accustomed to looking after the poor, although that was not Judas's real reason. But the poor was part of Jesus's concern. Paul also looked after the poor and even said in Galatians 2.10 that he was eager to remember the poor. The godly Dorcas was eulogized as one who was continually helping the poor. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. Acts 9.30 says, What about us today? Are we giving? If so, how are we giving? Are we giving sacrificially from out of our treasured circumstances? Or are we giving just what is left over? Let us adopt an attitude of humility in our giving. Jesus embraces humility. And in, in the account of Mark 12, 41 to 44, is written that the widow gave of her two mites and did so humbly without any fanfare, while the rich men dropped in their gifts in the treasury and made sure that the sound 
could be heard. Jesus recognized the widow's contribution more than the rich men. Jesus continues in this reference teaching and says, But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing. Verse 3. We know that the two hands work together. So Jesus is saying, regardless of the closeness, one is not to be privy to the other's affair. No one needs to know. Of course, that explains why Methodists make every effort to restrict the exposure of recipients of the care fund, the proceeds of the care fund. Now, notwithstanding the need for confidentiality, I believe there will be times for public giving, but not to the benefit of man's glory, but to God. We read of some public giving in the early church, but it was all done to the glory of God. In Acts 4, 34 to 37, the people who owned the lands and the houses sold them and brought the proceeds and they laid them at the feet of the apostles. For instance, Barnabas, he sold his field and he brought the money and he laid it at the feet of the apostles where the entire church witnessed it and benefited from it. Of course, we know of Ananias and Sapphira who were dishonest with theirs. But Jesus intends for us to give out of love for God without expecting recognition. So my sisters and brothers, as we journey in this Lenten season, let us give with our hearts and not according to tradition, neither for show. Sure. Let us give of our time, our talents, our resources for God's sake. Let us make a sacrifice for others, just as Jesus made for us. May I suggest then that we try forfeiting at least one of our luxurious Sunday meals and give to someone. Give up a lunch hour to spend some time with one who's hurting. Perhaps take the cost of that outfit that you're planning to order and wear at Easter and instead give some poor child a school uniform. And I want to remind you that our one day's appeal refers to giving of one day's pay. So bear that in mind as we, during this season, as we aim to live humbly and to share, to show love, as we aim to get into some deep prayer and fasting without drawing attention, let us do so through a heart of love. For then we have a reward from our Father in heaven who sees all. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for sharing your love with us. Thank you for sharing your Son. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for eternal life. May your Holy Spirit prompt us to give, to share, to look out for each other, to help bear each other's burden. As we live this journey, reflecting on Jesus' journey itself and his suffering, may we be willing to make a sacrifice for you and for each other. 
May we find time to spend with you in prayer and fast, not to show or to attract attention, but to do so humbly. Continue to be our burden bearer. Lord, there's some of us who are carrying burdens at this time. Relieve them in the name of Jesus. Is the pain, God. Is the pain that they're experiencing. And assure them, God, that you are with them throughout whatever they're experiencing. You are with them through their various crosses. You are the burden bearer. So God, lighten the burden for those who are carrying them. And as a response, God, may they be willing to show that gratitude and to proclaim your gospel as you have shown your love. God, we believe that you answer prayer. And I trust that someone who's listening, someone who's going through some difficult time, will reach out to you. Reach out. Jesus is the burden bearer. He says, come on to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So thank you, God, for doing it. Thank you for your son. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you. We thank you. Amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. 
Now therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise you for your glory and your glorious name. And now, brothers and sisters, unto him that is powerful to keep you without sin and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and in all the ages. And the people of God say, Amen. For being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.